In case you missed it, I recently reviewed different workouts daily for the month of December. I took all of your suggestions for who I should work out with, picked them out of a giant bowl, and I tried a lot of stuff. Now it was such a hit and there were so many coaches left, I decided to make this a monthly series. At the end of my last video of Vlogmas, I picked hybrid calisthenics out of my giant bowl of coaches, so that's what we're trying today. We'll talk about the method, the workout, and my thoughts on it. So let's jump into first, who is hybrid calisthenics? Hybrid calisthenics was developed by content creator Hampton, and the goal is to help people cultivate long-term fitness and happiness. Obsessed. I talk a lot about zooming out, looking at the big picture, thinking about your long-term health. So I love that Hampton is not focused on quick fixes or miracle cures. Hampton is a certified trainer who specializes in calisthenics, which is body weight exercise. Now I already made a whole video on calisthenics. So if you wanna know more of the basics of that, you can go check that out. But one of the big questions I get all of the time is how do I do calisthenics and strength training? And in that video, I talk about how I don't think you really need to choose between one or the other. Just like you don't need to choose between strength training or running, strength training and swimming, strength training and pickleball. Like you can implement all of these different modalities and still create a really successful workout routine that can support your long-term health. I have found the best mix of modalities is a healthy dose of everything that you enjoy and the stuff that you need to be healthy in 20, 30, 50 years. So the workout that we're doing today is taken directly from the Hybrid Calisthenics website and there is a full YouTube video that brings breaks down each exercise and gives you a little bit more of the why behind it. So let's dive into it and hear my thoughts. Hello, we're into the workout part of the video and I'm obviously dressed for it. Okay, I'm gonna take these off. So I just did a little warm up of my own. So we're gonna hop right into this workout. We have six different exercises and each exercise that Hampton has put together has between like three and 20 different progressions. So I chose the progression that I felt like was the most appropriate for me. First exercise is push ups. Now I have a full push up, but when I was looking at the rep ranges that Hampton wanted, it was like three sets of 40 on the ground. That's not gonna happen. The regression above that was incline push ups, so I could use my bench right here, but it was still like three sets of 40, which I also don't think I can do. So we're gonna bring it back to the very first option, which is wall push-ups. We're gonna be doing three sets of 50. Because I film in this room, I actually don't wanna put my grimy little hands on the wall. So we're gonna go into the, the little gym. Let's go. All right, we're gonna do three sets of 50. Get our placement. I actually don't think I've ever done a wall push-up before. All right. I feel like I didn't even feel my chest until maybe the last 10, but I feel like I could have done a hundred of those. So Hampton did say that the reps he suggests are like the goal. So what we're gonna do is go back into the other room and I'm gonna do some incline push-ups. and there's no way in hell I'm getting to 40, but we're gonna see how many I can get to and that's gonna be my starting like baseline. So what I would do is stick with that number and try and increase over time until I can get to the 40 and then I would go down to the floor. So let's go see how many we can do on an incline. Okay. I have the number 40 in my head. So I'm like, you're about to do 40 incline push-ups on an incline that probably should be higher. Like I just went from here to here. Oh, well. Okay. I'm stopping there because my shoulder feels weird. <laughs> That was 12 with a mini break to take my socks off. Um, in case you didn't know, I did injure my shoulder a few months ago, so I've been taking it easy. So we're not gonna kill ourselves trying to get 40 just for the sake of a YouTube video. So for rest time, I'm gonna give it about a minute, let my chest, my shoulders, my triceps recover. Push-ups are gonna be pretty draining on the body, so you wanna make sure that you are giving yourself ample rest time, especially if you are working for this many reps. So the goal would be to hit my 12 reps again, but again, it is my last set, so I might not get up to that many, and that is okay. We're just setting a baseline today around a cranky shoulder. <laughs> Twelve, great. Is that super impressive? No. Do I care? Also, no. Let's move it on to some raises. So raises are gonna be more of a core focused movement. I chose the level one option because I wanted to. <laughs> and we're doing two sets of 30. So let's try it and then we're gonna talk about it. Okay, very high volume. <laughs> 
We're gonna take about a minute and do that one more time. I don't hate that movement. Keep in mind that is level one. Now I would actually make level one alternating with the raises or the heel drops or whatever you wanna call this, which is what we're gonna do next time. The reason for that is because I had a really hard time connecting into my core. I felt like I was really pulling from my hip flexors, which in abdominal focused movements, like your hip flexors are gonna get involved. You're flexing your hips, like it makes sense. But for me right now, I'm like, I would rather focus on my core stabilizing my spine rather than just focusing on my hip flexors. Again, one is not better or worse than the other. That is just my personal preference. So I'm gonna take what Hampton has laid out and I'm just gonna zhuzh it and make it my own. So for this, I'm gonna start laying down on the back, knees in line with the hips, toes pulled up for a nice active an ankle. We're gonna inhale as we drop one heel down, exhale up. So with this, I'm definitely still utilizing my hip flexors, but I get a lot better contraction through my core, trying to keep my low back down, rather than worrying about like almost counterbalancing the entire lower body with my upper body. I also just find that this is like added bonus, a lot more hip mobility work. Arm positioning doesn't really matter. Sometimes I like it on the floor. Sometimes I like them raised up to the ceiling. I have no clue how many we're at. Let's do two more on each side, especially because I am starting to feel my hip flexors take over now. And that's kind of the thing with a lot of core exercises, planks, supine work, or on your back. Eventually, your core isn't gonna be able to, to be the prime mover or prime stabilizer or whatever anymore because it's gonna fatigue and you're gonna start pulling from other things. Again, is the why of this exercise to isolate the core or the abdominals? Probably not, so that's fine. But I think that that's also just a good teaching moment if you are trying to primarily focus or bias the abs, core, obliques, whatever, you're gonna do better off with more intention and less time than higher volume because you're gonna start pulling from other things like the low back, like the hip flexors. Let's stand it up for some squats, baby. Okay, we are doing a single leg squat. I chose this for two reasons. Number one, the bilateral squat was like 50 reps and I simply didn't want to do that many. And B, I have been having issues with my hips. I've known this for a long time and this year one of my big goals is to improve upon it, but I have very limited internal rotation. When you're going into a squat, once you hit 90, your hips literally have to internally rotate. So if they literally can't, you're going to start pulling from other places. For me, it's a lot on my knees and they've been cranky, so I have eliminated bilateral squats from my personal programming until I can just get a little bit more space in my hips in internal rotation. So, because we're not really going past 90, we're gonna do a single leg variation. And luckily for us, the sets are two sets of 12 on each side. That is a volume that I appreciate, sir. So for this guy, I'm gonna start seated so I know where the bench is. Opposite leg is flexed out. That's gonna be the ideal position. Honestly though, I noticed that a lot of people either don't have the quad or the hamstring strength to keep that leg straight. So if you need to, you can bend it. So we're gonna come up, inhale down. All right, I'll get the heart rate up. <laughs> that is challenging. So single leg squats are going to be a great progression, especially if you don't have access to weight, because now you just went from utilizing both of your legs to move your entire body up and down. Now you only get one of them. But let's do that one more time, 12 on each side. I'm gonna show you a few cues that I really like. And then if making the jump from bilateral to unilateral is a little bit too much, and let's say you don't have anything higher that you can start your way up on, I'll show you another option to regress this without just going into bilateral squats. So. Let's talk some cues first. Big inhale, on your exhale, press straight down into the ground. And at the top, I want you to think of pinching your inner thighs together. So I'm pushing the floor down, pinching my inner thighs together. As I come down, I wanna keep my core tight. Big inhale and tap it down. I'm keeping tension in this bottom leg so I can come right back up rather than working from a dead stop every single time. Let's say that's a little too difficult for you to come all the way up. You can start with both feet, stand up, one leg to come down. Or if for some reason it's the opposite problem, one leg up, two legs down. Oh, okay. I think we have pull-ups next, let's do it. Okay, here's the deal. Pull-ups, one of the most challenging body weight exercises or relative strength exercises in my opinion. Do I have a pull-up bar? Yes. Can I do multiple reps of pull-ups? Mm -mm. <laughs> Again, shoulder, we haven't worked on them in a while. So one of the options that Hampton shows are wall pull-ups. I don't really, could I use like, 
maybe. We did used to have a TRX mounted in the wall, um, but we ripped it out by accident. <laughs> so we're gonna get this bad boy up here. <laughs> this is the video that you realize I'm five feet tall. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna do one slightly assisted pull up and the assistance is me jumping a little bit. And by pull up, I mean chin up. Yeah. Mm. We're not doing more than one of those because I don't want to. This I would say is an exercise where it's like, oh, it's calisthenics, it's body weight, you don't need equipment. But like, you kind of do need something for this. Like, I actually don't know what I would do those wall pull-ups on in my apartment. So I would say this is probably the only exercise on here that does kind of have a barrier to entry. And that barrier to entry is just equipment. Let's move it along. Okay, we're back on the floor. We're doing three sets of 50 bridges. 50 bridges. Great, let's just bang them out. Ugh. God, that was boring. Oh my God, 50 reps, I have to do that two more times? I need like something to watch to keep me distracted. All right, we're almost there. One more exercise after this. I do love a glute bridge. I just would rather like put a big ass dumbbell on my hips and do way less reps and call it a day. Let's go for two more. Okay, now that that's done. So this is a twist, specifically a bent leg twist. We're gonna do this three times on each side, 60 seconds on each side. I'm gonna be honest with you, we're gonna do this one time on each side. I didn't realize how long so many sets and reps were gonna take me and I have to work today. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna find this little bent leg twist. We're gonna set a timer. We're gonna watch our fun little stories on here and I'll see you in two minutes. I like that twist. So one of the things that Hampton does talk about is that that twist should not just be like a relaxing stretch. You should be actively working to get more and more range of motion as you're going through the position. So I really love that, that we're kind of implementing a little bit of mobility into all of this body weight strength training. Um, so it has been now almost an hour. So I need to move on with my day. We'll see you in the review section. All right, key takeaways from that workout. A big question I get is, can I build muscle or strength with calisthenics? Absolutely. Studies have more recently shown that hypertrophy or visible muscle growth can occur outside of the typical three to five sets of eight to 12 reps that you see in a lot of strength training. But studies have also shown that it's really difficult to challenge the posterior chain, specifically on the lower body with body weight exercises. When comparing the muscle growth between strength and endurance training, we've seen the most growth in the quads. And this does make sense to me, especially for the lower body. So if we think about the posterior chain, we're gonna be thinking about hamstrings and glutes. Those two muscles are going to be your prime hip extensors. So the exercise that does target hip extension in this workout are bridges. But you can see we had to do a ton of volume. I would say some other options that we could get in could be like Nordic curls, maybe some like supine hamstring curls and single leg variations. You could do that with sliders or paper plates or a stability ball. But then I guess, is that not calisthenics anymore? Cause now we're using equipment. Like we got to use like rings, like we use equipment and other things. Like where does equipment end and like non-equipment begin? You know what I'm saying? Anyway, so I think for the posterior chain, in terms of body weight exercises, we definitely have a lot of things that we could do with the glutes in the shortened position, but challenging the glutes in the lengthened position in something like a deadlift is gonna be a little bit more challenging. You know, you could do like a front foot elevated reverse lunge or a rear foot elevated split squat, but that's also going to recruit a ton of quad because we are getting that knee flexion and extension. And that's probably why related back to those studies that we saw earlier, you see a ton of quad development in these body weight exercises. So definitely more difficult to isolate the glutes, especially in that lengthened position. But overall, you can still find hypertrophy results with calisthenics training. It really does all come down to your programming. And Hampton's is excellent. On his site, you'll see many strategic progressions of each basic drill. I'm a really big stickler for understanding how to progress something strategically, so I really loved seeing his approach. And if we look at the five 
six drills that he chose. It's definitely a very functional approach. Like we're pushing, we're pulling, we're knee dominant, we're hip dominant, we're rotating. So I love the fact that there's not only a lot of balance there, but everything that we're doing in this workout is going to translate into movement patterns that support our daily life. I also think that this would be a really great starting place for beginners or even people who don't have a lot of access to equipment. My only complaint is that the volume was so high. And it has to be. Since we're not loading under weight, we need to increase the reps a lot to actually gain strength and or muscle. Personally, I would rather just add weight and take the volume way down. It's not only a much more efficient use of my time, I also just enjoy it more. As a woman hovering around five feet tall, it feels really cool to move a lot of weight. And this is what goes back to my original point. I find that the best mix of modalities is a healthy dose of the stuff that you really enjoy and the stuff that supports your long-term health. All right, so my final takeaways. Hampton is awesome. I utilize body weight exercises in my programming when it supports my goals and my enjoyment. And I simply don't have the attention span for three sets of 50. <laughs> So if you wanna try out a purely calisthenics workout because that's one of your goals, you're traveling and don't have equipment, or you just really liked Hampton's vibes, I will make sure to link hybrid calisthenics and the exact workout that I did down below. Let's pick next month's workout, baby. There's so much happening on this table right now. <laughs> that's my bad. All right, February's workout is... We already did Caroline Gervin, but someone wanted me to try her advent calendar. Sorry, Caroline. You can watch this video here if you wanna know my thoughts on Caroline Gervin. All right, pop this one back in. Take two. Summer Fun Fitness. Never heard of you. Let's do a quick Google search. Oh my God, it's more calisthenics. Oh, they have a ton of like handstand prep. Interesting. You know what? I think we're gonna try and do a handstand next month. That is gonna be fun to watch. <laughs> I think that'll be fun because a lot of people have a goal of doing a handstand, but there's actually a lot of mobility requirements that I don't think a lot of people coach you through. So I think this will be a fun video. We'll do some handstand work. We'll talk about some mobility requirements and it'll be a lot of fun. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comment box below. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out. And I will see you all in the month of February with some summer fun fitness. Bye.